Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our admin who helped us with his translation. The translation, it reads like this. I have always thought of myself as a self-made man. I built my business from the ground up, and for years I was proud of that. But as my company grew, so did my greed. That was when I learned that money can never be enough. Money will never be enough indeed. I became obsessed with one thing. All that I wanted to do was to eliminate the competition. It was not enough to be successful. I wanted to be the one who was at the top. And when my ambition turned to desperation, I then found myself taking a path I never imagined that I would ever walk down on. A friend of mine mentioned a Sangoma, someone who could help me in brackets, and that person was going to help me to ensure that my rivals would fall and they would never be able to rise up again. He spoke of it as if it was just a casual thing, as if it was just another tool in business. But when I met the man, I knew immediately that this was no ordinary encounter. His home was deep in the woods, far away from everyone, and it was a small crumbling shack surrounded by thorny bushes. And when we got in there, that was when I saw that this was where the devil stayed himself. The Sangoma himself, when I looked at him, he looked at me and I got so scared. I really got nervous because here I was face to face with a man who could speak with my own ancestors. He barely spoke, but but whenever he did, his voice was low and rumbling like a distant thunder. He demanded a payment of blood for the first ritual. Not money, he said. Money was too simple. He needed something with a pulse. So I brought him a chicken, hoping that this blood offering of the chicken, since a chicken is a pulse, was going to be more than enough. But to my surprise, he just slaughtered it in front of me. The way that he slaughtered this chicken, it was the most terrible thing that I had ever witnessed in my life. He slaughtered the first chicken, and then he ordered me to slaughter another chicken that he had at his place. He made me to hold that chicken by the head, and he was holding the body of that chicken, and he told me that I had to pull. So I started pulling until I had totally pulled off the head of that chicken from the body. Then there was blood everywhere. And after that, that was when he let the blood flow into a bowl. And then he started to smear it across my hands. And when he was chanting like that, I felt like there was a force that was entering into my body. A demonic force that entered into my body. When we were inside the shack, it seemed as if the room was darkening as he spoke. I really felt, felt so scared. I knew that this what I was doing. It was quite wrong as someone who goes to church, but I was in too deep and I could not turn back. The next day, one of my competitors had a fire break out of their warehouse. They lost everything. I remember hearing and seeing the smoke and I was more than happy as if I had just closed a very good deal. I told myself that this was just business, that I had not done anything directly. It was just pure witchcraft and muti, so it was not a crime. Deep down, I knew that the things that I had done, they were not okay. And I have seen that when it comes to spiritual matters, there is a point whereby if you cross that line, then you are never going to come back again. I went back to the Sangoma asking for more. I wanted every one of my rivals to fall, to fall, to crumble beneath me. This time that was when he asked for a baboon's paw. He said that this was going to strengthen the curse, that it would bring my enemies to their knees. I did not ask, even though in my mind I was questioning myself, where was I going to get a baboon and cut off the paw from that baboon? That was when I remembered that I used to go to this other avatar. It was deep in the farms, so there were some guys there 
that I knew that were from Zim that used to sell me some guinea fowl that they would illegally trap in that farm and then they would sell it to us who would come to buy the meat because the guinea fowl it was really cheap rather than the white man when he would go out and shoot the guinea fowl he will make it to be very expensive these guys you'll just give them 50 rand yen and that type of money and then they would give you the guinea fowl so i returned back to that avatar and i spoke with one of the guys who had immediately recognized me as an old customer. I told him that I needed something apart from the beef that I was going to buy from their butchery. I wanted someone who could get me a baboon, a dead one. And then they said that it was going to be fine. They would try to do so. Later on, I then received a message on my WhatsApp. It was really late at night. I had to drive to the farms. I drove, I drove to the farms. It was somewhere around... 1 a.m. when I went to get the power of that baboon. I returned back to that traditional healer and when he worked the charm using that baboon's paw, it was like a magic. The Sangoma, he told me that he was not done with me yet. He wanted me to become a multi-millionaire. He wanted more. That was the problem with him. He then said that he wanted a human tooth. I was horrified because I did not know where to get one. Brother Nashi, this was what I did. I paid a grave digger to retrieve a tooth from a freshly buried corpse. Yes, I did. I did not ask questions and he did not offer any explanations. After I had given that man the money, he handed me the tooth that once belonged to a woman. The mistake that I did was that I read the name, the date of birth, and the date of death, because there was this little sign that they had left there. And until this day, I still remember that woman's name, as well as the Bible verse that they had wrote on there. It still haunts me each and every day. I returned back to that Sangoma. The Sangoma then took the tooth from me and grounded it into fine powder. He mixed it with some charms. And these charms, he told me that I was supposed to drink it. And this was going to make me to be invincible. Even if I go around without any bodyguard, no one will ever dare hijack me. My cars will always be safe. I can even park in the most places that are very dangerous here in Johannesburg. Nothing will happen. I find myself sometimes returning back from a girlfriend's place like late at night when they say that it is the time when the hijackings mostly takes place but no one can dare to touch me because i drank i drank that powder that had been grounded out of that tooth that had been removed from a dead woman so her spirit protects me no one can even dare think about stealing from me even my workers the way that they are scared of me like they are always selling on each other being little pimps because they are so scared of me this is my own story this is my own confession i know that the things that i did were quite wrong but what bothers me the most is that the way that i was using this multi it was like someone who is possessed my warning to other people out there is that when you go out there i'm not saying that drinking herbs our African traditional herbs, there is something that is bad about it. But there are these other rituals that are not okay. You start really small. All that I wanted was for people to come to my shops. But in the end, I, I did all of these horrific things that people do not even know. Yet I pretend as if I am a good Christian man, a family man. Please, when you post my story, tell me so that I can follow through in the comment section dear listeners right there was a message that was sent to me by one of our sister who gave us this translation strange things indeed they do happen in this world yo